The idea of generating a force field around a ship to serve within hyperspace, the same function as deflector shields in real space, would be irrelevant in light of the zero resistance of tachyon particles in hyperspace. However, the concept can be grasped as making the ship inside such a field behave through hyperspace from one point in real space to another, like an electrical bolt inside a power coupling. The notion of power couplings being used to create a glow point or a pulse point between two power generators to access hyperspace is at least as old as center point and sinkhole stations. The original technology developed by known species in recorded history to access hyperspace was the hypergate technology used by the GRI. These hypergates could link to one another through hyperspace by connecting the location of any one of them to the destination of any other one of them, thus linking them all into a single networked system. As long as new hypergates continue to be built on new worlds by the GRI explorers, the GRI enclave grew. However, when exploration became less important than maintenance of the overgrown system already in existence, the Gree Enclave eventually stagnated. The technology of the Gree Hypergates was based on the same concepts as the much later micro-miniaturized gravitic polarization beam emitter. Placed in the capstone of the Gree Hypergates, such a device created a semi-stabilized wormhole inside the archway of the hypergate that connected to the destination point by targeting the destination point along a relatively straight line. The harnessing of semi-stable wormholes using gravitic polarization beam technology was similar to the concept of using two distant locations in real space as the circuit junction ports of a conceptual connective gateway, alike the two sides of a power coupling. The premise of using a wormhole as a connective gateway in such a circuit junction port system was similar to the premise behind, if not the method of use of, center point and sinkhole stations. The Qua, in their Star Temple technology, Combine the methods of use for the hypergates with the technology of center point station. Their infinity gates used a single gravitically polarized power generator to transport anyone in the star chamber below to any desired destination in the galaxy almost instantly. This combined the celestial's use of power coupling oriented reactor cores for accessing hyperspace with the premise of creating a power coupling-like circuit connection between distant locations in real space. The oldest hyperspace beacons emitted pulsed electrical data signals through hyperspace, and their mechanics were based on a principle similar to power couplings as well. A small gap inside these beacons served to create a miniature gravitic circuit bridge or gateway through real space between two closely proximal points in hyperspace. This caused the creation of a massless entry point to hyperspace inside of a stationary gravity well, which in this case was used to house electrical broadcasting technology. Just as with the GRI Enclave's network of hypergates connecting locations that had already been built, the lighthouse network of hyperspace beacons was limited in use to the locations where such beacons had already been placed. The Qua had combined celestial and similar GRI principles to innovate on both, and had built the star temples to instantly beam their occupants anywhere. What the Qua infinity gates were to the GRI hypergates, so too was the hyperdrive engine to the hyperspace beacons. The premise on which the hyperdrive engine works is simple. The way it works is not. The hyperdrive combines the premise of a power coupling with several different working systems of a functional starship. Without even one of these other systems working in unison with it, 
the hyperdrive engine would not work. The hyperdrive engine combines the systems of the deflector shields for relativistic shielding, inertial dampeners for controlling center of gravity, sublight engines for providing propulsion, the NAVA computer for inputting the data to the hyperdrive from the ship's central computer, and essentially serves as a junction point or through port for the functioning of all the ship's systems to combine and work as one. Thus, the technological premise of the hyperdrive is the same as that of the core reactor, the hyper and infinity gates, center point and sinkhole stations, but most importantly of the simple power coupling. To connect point 1 to point 2 in the fastest way possible is the goal of electrical conduction by power couplings and of hyperdrive engines in traveling through hyperspace. To do this, however, a series of other complex systems is prerequisite. For example, relativistic shielding around a ship is a form of force field that can be phase controlled in its energy wavelengths to modulate the ship's energy pattern signature at a velocity faster than photic light. This creates the gravitic differential warp bubble around the outer hull of the ship that buffers it from the sudden jolt out of real space into the superluminal velocities of hyperspace. However, phasing energy at superluminal speeds would not be useful for a ship to enter hyperspace without the prerequisite invention of the complex system of deflector shielding. The very use of focused force fields as energy shielding is a definitive prerequisite for hyperspace travel. If the relativistic shielding of a ship traveling through hyperspace malfunctions, the resultant lag on time dilation causes what seems like a short trip inside a starship traveling through hyperspace to in fact take much longer than the same passage of time in real space. The most famous example of this was Bob Sit Metarcher, whom time traveled into his own future 190 years. The projection around a starship of relativistic phased deflector energy shielding to allow the ship to exit real space and pass into the superluminal velocities of the hyperspace dimension is based on the same principle at the core of the hyperdrive engine itself, a flat upright panel, the null quantum field generator, connecting between two vertical pole-shaped capacitors, the alluvial dampers a rectangular sheet of magnetized circuitry, the hyperdrive field guides, housed in an ornate metallic casing, the hyperdrive motivator itself. Although a spacer did not need to know everything about the engineering of a hyperdrive to experience the effects of travel through hyperspace and to apprehend the elegance and comprehend the premise of this concept behind it for themselves. Without knowledge of the key concepts behind its component parts, they could not build or fix a hyperdrive engine, and would likely soon find themselves adrift in deep space, or worse, marooned on some backwater planet.